from a New York crime family to the family of God. A testimony of Mark Lattieri. It was the end of 1998. For more than 20 years, I had been living what I thought was a successful life. One that earned me large sums of cash. I was heavily involved in organized crime with the most powerful mob family in New York City. I was on my way up. I was well known and well respected by many bosses and captains alike. I was known as a money earner in the crew of street guys that I belonged to. My business was loan sharking, extortion, payoffs, and all forms of gambling and union corruption. When called upon, I was also an enforcer. In fact, if certain union officials had a problem with a construction company, it was me they had to come to. I would discuss the problem with my crew and then take care of it my any way I saw fit. My street family was happy with me and I, how I looked and how I took care of their, their interests. But my real family, my wife and children, were not so happy. How could they be? I would routinely be out all hours of the night, sometimes for days at a time. Often get out of bed in the middle of the night whenever a call came in from one of my associates. I exposed my family to some of the most ruthless, evil people that you can ever imagine. They were often left in the dark, not knowing where I was or who I was with or whether I was dead or alive. The violent lifestyle I lived made its way into my home on a regular basis. My house was a, a war zone. I could only imagine the thoughts that went through the hearts of my wife and children while they watched the misguided and obscene behavior of a man that was supposed to be a husband and father to them. Unawares to me, my life was an example of this verse in the Bible. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17.9. In the fall of 1998, I took my friend Mike with me to collect money from a customer of mine who was late on his payments for the last two weeks. I had already given him a beating two weeks in a row, but on this, the third week before I could hit him, he started crying and said that he had just enough and wanted to kill himself. I told him, just pay me the money first and then I'll give you the gun to do it. He pleaded with us to take his to take him to see a pastor or a priest. I looked at him and said, I don't know anyone like that. You're looking at the devil himself. Suddenly, I heard a voice of my friend saying to me, Mark, have a heart. This guy is sick. I know a pastor, and there's a men's meeting at his church tonight. Why don't we take him? I just looked at Mike and said, what, are you kidding me? He said, no, I never told you, but I've been going for a while. I said, well, if you want to take him, you take him. I don't want to have any part of that. We went our separate ways, but later that night, Mike showed up at my door with a customer and said, Mark, just take a ride with us. You'll like this pastor. He's from our old neighborhood in Brooklyn. So I said, okay, but I'll wait in the car. When we got to the church, my friend said, just come in for a second. I didn't want to, but I went anyway. When I walked in the door, there was a group of men standing in a circle who were just getting ready to pray. All of a sudden, I felt one of them reach for my hand. I cursed this, I cursed this guy with every vulgar word I knew. Then I turned around and walked outside to the car. But before I got more than a few steps out the door, it was as if someone was speaking to me. Don't walk away. This is what you need. Go back. I'm here. I heard this in my heart and soul, and I know now that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. I tried to resist, but I could only take another step toward the car. I turned around and went back in. I walked directly over to the pastor and asked him if he would pray with me. This was the first time in my life that I had ever swallowed my pride. I heard from my mother for years that the only way to heaven was through Jesus Christ, and now it seemed that he was calling to me. When the pastor prayed with me, I started to cry like a baby. I felt the presence of God, and I asked Jesus to forgive me for my wicked, evil life and to wash me with his blood. I told Jesus that I knew that he died for me personally and that he rose again so that I could have life. I asked him to be my Savior, Lord and Savior and take my life and use it any way he saw fit. After we prayed, the pastor pointed out something that he that I already realized. The customer who Mike and I unwittingly brought to the meeting was actually used by God to bring me there. There was no disputing that. I went out of that church feeling like a new man. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. I become new, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All my sins were gone, and I knew it. I felt as though a building was lifted off me. From that point on, my life began to change. What I once had justified as being a perfectly normal lifestyle was now, to me, a totally dis disgusting and wicked life. 
by God's grace and power, I was able to get out and never go back. Even though I know that I have a new life now through Jesus Christ, I still cry when I think about all the people that I physically hurt. Some of them I don't even know why I just obeyed an order. I also cried and, and get, get sick when I think about when I, what I put my wife and kids through for so many years. But I thank God that they never gave up on me. Praise the Lord that after a while, my wife and children also accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. God has truly blessed my life. I have no regrets that I put my life in God's hand and I answered his call. Each day, Jesus is helping me to overcome more and more of my old lifestyle and sin. I have the Word of God in seeking his counsel. I am living for my Savior, Jesus Christ, and striving to be the husband and father of the child that I should be. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ that when I truly was not looking for him, he was looking for me. My advice to anyone who reads this is, is success in life is not one with your fist, a bat, or even a gun, but true success is one through Jesus Christ and the Word of God, the 1611 King James Bible. The Bible says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of, our, of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of truth, 1 Timothy 2, 3, 4. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, John three sixteen and 17. If you pray to Jesus and believe in your heart that he died for your sins personally, he will save you from hell and keep you saved forever. Mark Lettieri. To learn more about Jesus Christ and to grow as a Christian, you are invited to contact or visit First Bible Church.